What the is SD WAN? The is sassy. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about one of our more popular videos, but most importantly, how that applies today. What is the difference between SD WAN and sassy? Talk a little bit about what the AI is that with ChatGPT4's newest installment. And you're not going to want to miss this week's meme of the week. All this and more on this episode of Cloud Sherpa. Bueno, Poppy. Man, all right. One for one. One for one on the intro. One take Jake, baby. One take Jake, baby. Hey, bro. So, I'm, um, so dude, look, our more popular videos from our channel is on SD WAN and on Sassy. But what I want to talk with you about today in another installment of the advice is right. Right. Last time we did VDI and Daz. This time we're going to dial in on SD WAN and Sassy, kind of like the way that it's it's architect, right? Like how how they're, they're built. Yeah, happy to be here, man. What is SD WAN? Just a quick over the top. What is SD WAN? Well, so let's even back up further because we're talking about you know just different frameworks uh, or methodologies and how we build the network because the old days of you know hub and spoke MPLS um, those are kind of going away, and you know we could always do redundancy. Uh, with a couple of circuits through, say, like a cradle point, um, I could fail over one circuit to another. So I could have maybe my MPLS, but then I also had maybe a cable backup. Um, and that's fine. You know, we could do that. But the problem there is if I drop one of those circuits in the, you know, old framework, I'm probably going to drop whatever call I'm on or whatever session I'm on. Uh, so I'm going to lose a little bit of data while it fails over to that next circuit. Um, so fast forward, you know, now we've got SD-WAN and SD-WAN gets a little bit better with um, intelligent failover where maybe, you know, guys like uh, Big Leaf do a good job of this, where they can actually throttle different applications to provide bandwidth uh, to, you know, more prioritized applications over ones that, you know, like, let's say people are streaming YouTube inside of my uh, business. I don't care if they get you know, access to YouTube, I could throttle that. With SD-WAN, I can prioritize those applications, let the system know which ones are most important to me. Um, and it gives me a lot more flexibility. I'm starting to load balance my network versus just, you know, uh, providing, you know, redundancy and failover. Um, but a lot of these SD-WAN boxes, dude, they can bring in up to like four different connections now. So I could have, I could keep my MPLS network if I wanted to. I could plug in a cable to it or a fiber to it, uh, 4G, 5G connection to it. And not only will it load balance, but it'll send packets down each one at the same time. So let's say I've got... Uh, a cable circuit that's getting say a 300 by a hundred. And then I've got a fiber that is, you know, giving me a, a hundred meg by a hundred meg. It combines those bandwidths. So now I'm getting more speed, right? You know, so it's not like it's just sitting there waiting for the other one to fail over. So if my fiber cuts, well, you know, I can fail over to the uh, cable circuit. No, it's using both at the same time and providing me even more bandwidth than what I'm getting out of my fiber circuit alone. If I'm if I'm utilizing a resource that normally would be on standby, should something shut off, how then can I expect 
the secondary resource to be just as good as it should have been if it was on standby. So that comes from really the cloud architecture in these SD-WAN um, suppliers. So if they are traversing all of that bandwidth into their network, they're load balancing it um, before it even, you know, that traffic gets back to its destination. So they're taking that off of your plate. You know, you don't have to handle that and you don't have to do that in house. Um, and that's the cloud nature of, you know, these SD-WAN applications. Um, but we're getting even more sophisticated now uh, when you start layering in the SASE um, or the secure access service edge component. Uh, so now I'm layering in the security piece of it uh, where it's not just load balancing that network, it's also um, telling it, you know, what ports it can go through and, you know, making sure that it's checking, um, you know, encryption uh, signals at each end. You know, so if it's, say, a, a fully consolidated, you know, um, security measure that you're trying to put together, you know, in a SASE environment, if you've got, say, multiple security services bundled into one, SASE is going to reduce that risk that's associated with, say, an individual security component failure. Uh, so if one security layer encounters an issue, well, then another security layer can, you know, provide protection and ensure kind of a consistent security posture across your network. Yes, yeah, SASE is cloud native. So most SASE providers are built in the cloud. So um, it's distributed across, you know, different data centers throughout different regions and, and throughout different uh, parts of the world even. You know, for a global organization, um, latency can be a big deal. Uh, so that's why we talk about like content delivery networks where I'm caching content in a data center. And, you know, if you're watching, say, live sports on TV, that's why you have that seven second delay, because it's cached in a data center somewhere before it's delivered to you. Um, it also gives them the ability to hit the uh -oh <laughs> cut button. out the cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. there's that uh, too. But, you know, SASE is, it, it's not just about being able to handle more traffic down that pipe, but it's also really about handling the adversity in your network, right? So say as traffic starts to surge or as uh, different, you know, challenges pop up on the network, SASE can kind of dynamically scale and reroute, you know, uh, without any kind of interruption in your network. So that's really the big benefit when we get into a SASE environment. This is why we do a risk analysis with clients, right? Because for some clients, I mean, if you're a, say a veterinarian with multiple locations, you may not really care too much about um, little blips in your network, you know, but if you're a, a fintech company and you're trading hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars um, constantly, uh, you may your risk tolerance might be a lot lower and, and, and therefore you're going to require say a, uh, you know, a more solid uptime so that you don't have any kind of downtime at all. Yeah. I can see that, that being a very good example, right? Like the seconds matter on that, on that kind of a deal, a FinTech deal, right. <laughs> Versus say a vet. Sure. That, that's a good yeah. Point. So, so it, it's all a matter of, uh, what type of business are you running? Um, and that's why we want to look at everybody differently because, you know, people talk about all this, uh, the, the, the cool bells and whistles that pop up, but it doesn't always mean that you need them. Right. And, yeah. and we like to talk about them because we're, you know, technology guys, but at the end yeah. of the day, it may not be, uh, the best solution for say a small business client, because when you start talking about multiple circuits coming into your, 
um, you, you're one small branch. that has got 10 people sitting in that office. <laughs> I mean, your, your network cost really starts to go up. Yeah. So, yeah. That's right. You know, as much as, uh, some of these service providers want to talk about the cost savings to SD WAN or SASE, that's not always true. Um, yeah, if you're going from maybe an MPLS to a SASE environment, you could maybe see some cost savings. But not what we're going, you know, just to say a cable circuit with a 5G backup, because then I've got to have uh, my firewall's got to have two dual WAN uh, ports on it. So that means I've got to have a little bit of a bigger firewall, a little bit more sophisticated of a firewall on the edge. Um, so that's more cost. I'm I got the cost of a second circuit, and if, if it's not an office that's staffed all the time. I mean, you go, man, why, why do I need all that? So yeah. that's where we talk about, you know, you could just stick a cradle point out there and, and do failover. Yeah, you might drop a call, but you, you can call your wife back and talk about dinner later. <laughs> yeah, this is where, you know, this procurement on the front end, it becomes the most important side of it. Um, it's, it's, it's a phrase I'm going to champion, I think, as I continue to grow in this field with you is things don't go wrong. They start wrong. This is one of those things for sure. And if you find yourself in a position where you are overspending, sometimes what you need to do is like kind of do an audit. It's really, this yep. is why the discovery call with us, I think is one of the strongest value propositions that we include with our service. Is not about, uh, it's not a matter of just a consulting itself. Consulting is important, but you can ask anybody for an opinion. What's different is really assessing what have I already invested in? What have I tried? Like you said, what am I willing to try? What am I not willing to try that'll help me actually determine a solution that I'm going to utilize correctly? Yeah, not all businesses are built the same. So we're going to take a you know clean slate approach to every business that we look at and go, okay, what's the problem we're trying to solve? And then we'll find you the right technology to solve for it. And that's our mantra, right? Um, so it's it's not always you know, the same across the board. So yeah, I mean, you just have to take a look at your business and, and what makes sense for you. Yeah, what you got for us today, Joey. Bro, bro. So look, man, AI has been always, it's been the topic to the point where it's a segment now. Chad GPT-4 has now released a feature uh, as early as I think it was the 24th or the 27th. It just came out here in the last week as of the recording of this. Um, where it's permitting the paid users to upload a screenshot and then essentially get code from GPT from the screenshot where it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily ripping it from it mm. or it's just recreating it, but I'm going to end up popping up one of the examples that I saw, one of the many that I saw of someone showing the dashboard of a SaaS product and asking GPT to make the code for it. And as quickly as that thing does respond, it kicks him out on the first pass, something almost identical, like an 80, 90% replicant of the product that he wild. was looking at. I gave the new GPT-4 vision model this screenshot of a SaaS dashboard, and I asked it basically to break this down into components and write all the code. So I went through all the files, I pasted all the code in, right, all this code here, and out came this. This was a first pass. Let's go side to side really quick. You can see we've got um, sort of this menu here with all of these drop down or all these uh, menu options. Okay, it got all of those right. Obviously the styles are different. It actually copied like the exact copy from the example here, right? You're getting the same number of the prop. It's getting, you know, sales report. Like I really want you to appreciate like all of this data in the table was actually 100% correct. So the combination of SD WAN and SAS and 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 Cybersecurity, right? <laughs> yeah, what do you that's think? That's good. I mean, that's really... I nail it. Let's go. That's pretty good. I, I, I'm not going to lie. 
you know, <laughs> you get in the best of both worlds, but, um, one might be a little bit more weighty than the other. Yeah. 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 Just a little bit. So just a little. Ne- nevertheless, good one. I like that one. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that, that's a wrap. I mean, good discussion. I, I love talking about this stuff. And if you guys have other things that you want us to talk about, drop it in a comment. We're happy to, you know, to take a look at another topic, but until then, Luke 923.